Mr. Katz, it's your turn. And before you speak, I just want to thank you because um, I, over the last week and a half, I, I don't know about my colleagues because as for Sunshine, we're not allowed to speak to each other, but between you and Rita Solnet and Ron, Ron LaFace in Tallahassee, I mean, you could, the three of you did a tremendous job of coordinating all that happened here over the last week. I understand that there's thousands and thousands of emails, text messages, and phone calls that went to the the senators, and it's because of the the, 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 the magic trio that the, the three of you put together between you and, and Mrs. Solnit and, and Ron LaFay. So thank you very much for your efforts on behalf of the school board. Uh, the, all that money, although some of that money is for teachers, a lot of it was up for other, other issues that's coming from that referendum, including security in our schools and, of course, our mental health. So we thank you very much for your efforts in putting all that together. Thank you. My name is Justin Katz. I'm the president of the Palm Beach County Classroom Teachers Association. Um, the first thing I wanted to do tonight was thank the school board and your staff and the superintendent um, for supporting the referendum. Uh, I stated it yesterday at the rally we held that I truly do believe that we have the best school board in the state of Florida. I, I don't say that um, lightly. I don't say that because we enter negotiations tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I say that because I've worked in this district for over 12 years now. I've been coming to this room for the past six or seven years. Um, I've seen all of you operate, and it's, it's just it, it's a beautiful board, a diverse board, a deliberative board, and a fair board. Um, you guys do an amazing job. So first, I just wanted to thank you for that. So the, the reason I'm here, the reason all of these teachers are here tonight um, is because, as, as has been pointed out by everyone who's being honest about the situation we find ourselves in, that this is an issue of what is right an issue of what is ethical and moral and democratic. That is why we're here today. Um, this is not about partisan politics. This is not about ideological divides. Going back to a year ago this month, this board started to discuss the language that would be placed on the referendum ballot in November. Not only did you all discuss in a public setting, a group of elected officials with input from residents exercising their rights to speak and advocate for the position they believe was right. Not only did you discuss that in the month of May and have a robust debate that led to different opinions, that led to you seeking additional research because you wanted to be as clear as possible that what path you took forward was the legally right path, whatever it may be. So the item was tabled an entire month until the June meeting. And when you all came back at the June meeting, again, a group of elected officials discussed and deliberated in a public meeting, had input from residents who had different opinions, both sides of this issue, and ultimately at the end, with that additional research and due diligence on your part, you made a decision how to word the ballot. You took a vote. It was a lawful vote by this board what to put on that ballot. Fast forward another month or so, the county commission was presented the ballot language and had to exercise their authority to put that question on the ballot. They did. Other details that have been overlooked in all this beyond the ballot language are that there was a discussion about when to hold the election. Should we do it during the August primary? Should we do it during the November general election? It was ultimately decided to do it in November, and a large part of the justification for that decision was to put it to a vote by the most, the largest possible number of voters. Everybody knows that turnout says it's highest in November, and there is legislation in Tallahassee now trying to prohibit referenda from coming before voters outside of a November election because there's concerns about low, tone, low voter turnout in municipal elections in March and primaries, et cetera. The bottom line is you guys decided to put it 
on the ballot at the time that the most voters would have an opportunity to exercise their right to vote yes or no on the question. Mr. Katz, you can continue because you kept it, you said if you, you would give you a little more time if the teachers Thank didn't you. all speak tonight, so continue. There are a number of teachers who are upset with me that I asked them to let me speak for them tonight. Um, <laughs> I will deal with that. <laughs> um, so again, the decision was to put on November ballot. Mind you, now looking back, the November election was the highest voter turnout of a midterm election in the state of Florida ever. So we had more people voting on this question than any midterm election ever in the history of this state. The most democratic and open possible election we could have chosen. And it passed by 72% of the vote, 382,000 plus residents in Palm Beach County. Um, it is ridiculous how many people supported this, how much consensus there was, there is no way to say this only passed because this group liked it or that group liked it. 72% means all groups liked it. So it passed in November. We thought we were done. Fast forward now. We are in negotiations for the current year. And part of those negotiations were to decide the language that would go into the contract governing the portion of the referendum that pertained to teacher raises. Raises that were put into place as supplements for our pay for the next four years because Tallahassee has repeatedly chosen to, to, to look at a business model for public education that says, what's the cheapest way we can do this? And that is how public education is funded every year. I don't think that's the smartest way to fund public education, but that appears to be the will of the majority up there. So now here we are. Six months later, public meetings, votes by this school board, votes by the county commission, votes by the most important people in this process, the residents of Palm Beach County. It passes, we negotiate a contract, it's ratified by over 8,000 teachers. It was the highest voter turnout we had in our contract ratification in memory. When there is this much money on the line for teachers who have felt underpaid forever, they show up and vote. Now here we are at the legislative session and inexplicably on the tail end of all these democratic processes that were done in accordance with the law in public and with the input of anyone who saw fit to comment, to exercise their vote, an undemocratic act is taking place, took place, in the Florida House of Representatives in the form of House Bill 7123. It only takes one undemocratic act to undo dozens or hundreds or thousands of moral and ethical and democratic law-abiding decisions by our government. And that is what's happening right now. <laughs> Nobody is even fighting with the legislature about the fact that there is a decision being made to change this rule moving forward. Whether you agree or disagree with it, rational people have accepted that if a majority votes for it and the governor signs for it, moving forward, that will be the law of the land. The issue I take, the issue I think all of you take, and the issue that hundreds of thousands of voters in Palm Beach County should take is that a legislative body that is upset with an election outcome cannot legislate it out of existence. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever happened before. You know, I'm 35, so I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> but I, I cannot remember a point in my lifetime where an election transpired, something won, Naturally, there are people happy and unhappy about it. There are winners and losers in government. That's how this system works. But when you win, you expect what you voted for to be carried out. When you lose, you wait till the next election cycle and you fight and you try to win the next time. <laughs> you do not and you cannot abuse your power as elected officials 
to reverse the outcomes of lawful democratic processes. It is not even about this referendum anymore. It is not about charters and non-charters. It is about a dangerous precedent being set that a majority coalition in the legislature that a majority coalition in the legislature, any legislature at any level of government, can say, we don't like what the voters decided in an election. Let's change that right now. Um, it's just not right. I understand that this is an emotional and personal issue. I've said it before in speaking on previous topics when I've come before you that I don't have children, but I get it. There is nothing more important, and you will do anything to get what you think is right for your children. I understand that. So I sympathize with individuals who don't agree with what happened. But our government does not govern based on how people feel when they lose an election. You, you just can't do it. I, I'm at a loss for words, um, and I'll, I'll try to wrap it up. Thank you. Like I said, to me, as, as an employee of this district, as a government teacher my entire career, this goes against everything I ever taught my students. This goes against every standard that I ever developed my curriculum. It, it is just the legislature and, and I'm praying enough people in the Florida Senate stand up to ideological decisions that fly in the face of everything that is right and everything that legitimizes our government. It cannot be allowed to happen. <laughs> Again, I, I pray that the Senate, by tomorrow when they make their decision, simply remove the language that says retroactive. If you want to change the law moving forward, that is your prerogative as a majority. You won the elections. You have a right. But this again, is, is beyond the scope of your powers. It is beyond anything decent in our government. And again, I'll wrap it up by thanking you um, for your support the past few days, for your support through this entire process. Everything was done right. It's impossible to make everyone happy. It's impossible for someone or some group to win every time. And people have to accept that sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and you live to fight another day in another election. And I, I, I pray that, that this message gets up to those legislators in Tallahassee, that you are not just disrupting what we've done here. You are undermining democracy in Palm Beach County. I don't care what happened any other district in this state. Palm Beach County did its job, crossed its T's, dotted its I's, and that's it. So the Senate needs to do the right thing. They've got a, a day or a couple days left, depending on how this shakes up. I'm, I'm asking the Senate to do the right thing. And with that, thank you everyone for, for coming here tonight. Thank you everyone who came out yesterday. Um, a lot of people have complimented me tonight. Thank you for that. Uh, Justin, the, Justin, the teachers are very lucky to have you as their Justin, we have to get on with the meeting. If you don't <laughs> I appreciate the, the leniency tonight. Just thank you all again. Uh, I don't deserve nearly as much of the praise that's been given to me today because it, it's impossible for one person. No one person should try to take as much credit as has been given to me tonight. Um, and and the, the teachers and the voters and you all uh, deserve as much a share of the credit for trying to do the right thing and following the process. So with that, thank you very much.